It's been called one of the biggest scientific discoveries in history. Over the weekend, the theory of inflation, described as the smoking gun of the Big Bang, was proven. Inflation was theorized by physicist Alan Guth and Andre Linde back in the 1970s. Guth now teaches just down the road at MIT, and Linde works at Stanford. The breakthrough was announced to the world at Harvard, but Linde learned about it from a colleague who surprised him on his doorstep and simply recited an equation. Take a look. Wow. Oh. So I have a surprise for you. Wow. It's five it. sigma at point two. Discovery. Yes. What? <laughs> Just a second. Can, 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 can you repeat it? Five sigma, as clear as day, are at point two. Can you repeat it again? Are point two plus or minus point, point two. If you stop there. <laughs> To help us better understand this news and its significance, I'm joined by Alan McRobert. He's senior editor of Sky and Telescope magazine. Welcome to Greater Boston. Glad to be here. So what was Mr. Linde just hearing? What was he, what Those he numbers that he was reacting to were uh, results from an astronomical experiment going on in Antarctica, which has just provided the final proof of the theory of how and why the Big Bang happened that created the universe that he and others worked out uh, uh, more than 30 years ago. So how did this come about? What was the origin of the discovery? It was, yeah, it was in the 70s. What took them so long to prove it anyway? What happened in the 70s and 80s was the development from pure physics of how a, a method by which the Big Bang could happen. Uh, previously, it had been known that the universe was in a hot, dense state 13.8 uh, billion years ago, as, as we now know the, t the time. But... Uh, and Nobody these are knew. notes that, that, that they took back in the 1970s when they yes. first started developing Alan Guth, when he first worked out the theory of how the Big Bang could actually happen by a physical process, spectacular realization. But it's been many years since then, and gradually more and more things have indicated that this theory is true, this mechanism called cosmic inflation. Mm -hmm. And this was the final big win, the final big proof that this is how the Big Bang happened, and it tells something about the larger pre-existence from which the big, our Big Bang universe arose. So I'm going to read just a simple definition of inflation that we found, and maybe you can add to that. It's, it's uh, theory of inflation, less than a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, the universe expanded faster than the speed of light. That was in the New York Times. Is that well, about sum it up? Make it less than a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. And it wasn't just expanding much, much faster than the speed of light. It was expanding in a by the bootstraps process that not only drove this expansion but filled the expanding space with all of the stuff, all of the matter and energy that exists now. And this stopped at, uh, this ended at a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second after it began, leaving us with the expanding universe uh, that we've got now. Okay, so tell me what you actually saw through this telescope. What did the telescope refract? What, what were you looking at? What it was looking at was the cosmic microwave background radiation that wallpapers the sky, which is the dim, very weak afterglow of the Big Bang that we still see. And this has patterns, very weak patterns in it, by which you can read lots and lots of information. And in particular, a very subtle form of patterning uh, the, of the polarization of the microwaves gave an indication of what was going on in this first trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. And it was cosmic inflation, just like Andre Linde uh, predicted. And, and what does it tell you about the creation? That's what the creation of the universe was? So that's the... Yes, this is a... You could think of this as a look back into a very, very brief look back into the pre-existence before the Big Bang, the, the uh, larger realm or matrix out of which our Big Bang arose before our space-time broke off from us and left us with this expanding universe that we're in now. And this larger pre-existence uh, that is constantly inflating, eternally going on, eternally spinning off probably large fantastically large numbers of other big bangs, this is a, our first actual look into it. What can I tell you about the future? I mean, are there going to be other big bangs? Or the, and do we assume there are other universes now? It is 
harder to escape that conclusion. This is the idea of a multi multiverse, many other universes going on, uh, has been a philosophical speculation, and it is closer and closer now to being a, a physical reality that's uh, pretty hard to escape. Hmm. And yeah, so, I mean, how, how do you, how would you discover that? Is 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 there a way that science will be able well? To at some after point? this discovery, <laughs> uh, it's going to be a California gold rush mm -hmm. of others going in to try to find, see, observe this in more detail, see more of what's going on. This experiment uh, in Antarctica was uh, one of about eight or ten that are ongoing in this race to either find or disprove uh, this, uh, this particular weak signature of cosmic inflation. Uh, so there are many competitors uh, chasing at the heels of this, this group that uh, made the discovery first. Uh, they will be able to uh, confirm or disprove, probably confirm, uh, that this uh, is, is real and go into more detail. There's going to be lots of funding going into this yeah. from now on. This will give a better idea of uh, in more detail how the inflation process worked and as somebody uh, one of the panelists said at the announcement at Harvard uh, on Monday that uh, was announcing this uh, they said well 20 years from now it's possible uh, that we will be back here to uh, tell you we found the multiverse. Oh wow. Okay Alan McRobert thank you so much. Thank you.